for five days, Vienna is the place to head for one-of-a-kind necklaces, rings, and brooches. Jewelry collectors and makers meet at the Vienna Jewelry Days. The trade fair starts out with 10 selected artists exhibiting one work each in the Museum for Applied Art. 150 international designers are represented at the Jewelry Days. Here, not everything that glitters is gold. Initiator Christina Werner makes out several trends. Currently, we have a lot of jewellery in the area of upcycling and recycling. For example, Mario Albrecht of Germany. He uses plastic foils to make brooches. When he's finished, you can't tell what material was used. A really big trend is 3D jewellery. And there are a great many jewellery artists producing gender-neutral jewellery. For instance, a chain that can be worn by a man or a woman. Jewellery can be a status symbol as much as a fashion accessory. Designers seek to elicit a response to their works. Many things don't make a tremendous impression at first sight, but when you look at them more closely or understand the humor behind them, then they work at a meta level too. You always have people asking what it's made of or why, and uh, so there is a kind of uh, conversation starting, and I like this. I work a lot with classic forms of jewelry, but I also try to break with them, sometimes ironically, so that they throw people for a loop. During the Viennese Jewelry Days, the artists are showcasing their designs in various places across the city. Their pieces range from necklaces from a 3D printer to bracelets made from horn. Michel Berger, a jewelry designer from Germany, is taking part in Vienna for the first time. His rings are rather out of the ordinary. Kinetic jewelry differs from normal jewelry because even the slightest movement of the wearer sets the piece in motion. So naturally that attracts attention, more than is usually the case for jewelry. Michael Berger makes all his pieces in his Dusseldorf studio. The goldsmith learned his techniques from Friedrich Becker, the inventor of kinetic jewelry. Michael Berger often has to work through a number of designs and prototypes before such a piece functions as intended. Unseen tiny ball bearings, axles and screws are at work here. I never use magnetism, even if many people assume that at first. It's all precision mechanics that has to be crafted very carefully so that this floating effect comes about. Michel Berger works with coated stainless steel, gold, silver and precious stones. His rings cost more than a thousand euros. Men and women alike can wear his jewelry. Berger is fascinated by people's differing perceptions. Responses are a bit polarized, I have to say. Some people say, it's great, but it would drive me batty. Others say it really calms me down. So people have extremely divergent responses, but they definitely respond, and that's positive. This is a kind of jewelry that doesn't leave anyone cold. So I'm quite content, because it's not jewelry for just anybody. In addition to exhibitions, the program at the Vienna Jewelry Days includes talks and workshops. This is a great forum to present yourself and to meet other artists and people interested in the jewelry scene. For me, exhibiting in Vienna is something new. It's fascinating to see how the locals respond to my work. His show got off to a good start. The critics at the opening were nothing if not moved by Michel Berger's jewelry.